Welcome back everybody. Thanks so much for joining me again. Today we've got a really interesting video because it's not just me. Oh no, we've got some award-winning photographers joining us today to talk to you guys about how to find your style. Yes, as I said before, today's video is all about style. It's so important on so many levels, but we'll get into that with each individual photographer that we're going to be speaking to. We have got, like I said, three award-winning photographers with us today. We have got Dorte, who is an absolutely incredible uh, children's lifestyle family photographer, and her work is just amazing. It made me cry, um, and, uh, and that's not like me. And then we also have got Jo, who helped find the photographers that we're going to use in this, the video today, so I really owe a lot of thanks to Jo. Jo is a uh, awesome photographer from over in Lincolnshire. She has a beautiful style, iconic, I can tell a picture is hers. Then we have Annie, who is an absolutely incredible fine art award-winning photographer. Her work is just incredible as well. So we've got her coming in for us. So what is style? I'm gonna very briefly just run through before we kick off. And for me, style essentially is if I was scrolling through a social media feed, would I be able to tell when I, on the first glance of seeing a picture, whose picture that was. And if I could say yes, just by the style and the the personality that oozes out of that photograph, can I tell whose it is? And in the case of Joe, yeah, 100%. It doesn't matter what, what the subject is, whether it's a dog, whether it's a horse, irrelevant. I know it's Joe's the second I see it. And that, my friends, is style. We'll go into why it's important and why everybody should have theirs and try and find theirs. But one thing that I really need to stress before we kick this off is firstly, go and get yourself drinks and a snack because you're gonna wanna be comfy for watching this. But then secondly, remember that just because somebody's style might be a certain way, that does not excuse poor technical skill. So you can't dress up a picture that's out of focus and overexposed and say that it's just, that's just my style. Well, no, technically it's not, it's not right. If your technical competence isn't there, style can't cover it over. So just keep that in mind and make sure that you are always, always trying to improve yourself in a technical standpoint and then your style can just add to that. So really style includes both shooting and editing. The, the, the two aren't mutually exclusive. Style does bring those elements together and it is something that you develop over time. If you haven't already, please do press the subscribe button and click the bell icon. The bell icon helps you out because it gives you notification every single time I upload a video. I upload every week and sometimes more than that if I feel like it, although this video is not the normal style. Today we're on video calls, that's weird. It doesn't, it's not normal and I'm gonna try and not screw that up. But yeah, if you can, please do subscribe. Helps me out no end, helps you out because you might learn something. If you learn something and haven't subscribed, then that's a bit mean. I don't want to fill up any more time, so I think we should just jump straight in with the interviews and I'm going to try and keep things moving super quick. Let's crack on. Um, thanks so much for joining us today, daughter. I need to try and remember to look up, but I'm not going to remember. So I've got a list of questions, which you have already seen, just so that you are prepared. So I'm going to read those questions to make sure I get the questions right. Um, but then after that, I just want to open the floor and you can answer as a, however you see fit. So the first question is, who are you? What do you shoot and where do you shoot that from? So Dorte, please take it away. Thanks very much for having me. I'm really grateful to be here. Uh, so my name is Dorte. I am based in Leicestershire. I work with families and lifestyle brands. I do have a studio, but the majority of my work is on location. I live in the countryside, so I'm spoiled for choice, really. It looks like a beautiful background. I can see yeah. the trees. <laughs> we, I, we are just surrounded by fields. Yeah, I'm very lucky. <laughs> It's lovely. I also noticed that you didn't mention, but um, you have very recently won an award, haven't you? Are you able to talk about that? I have. Um, yeah, and it's um, I'm not very comfortable with it yet because it's really new. And I feel like, and I just, we all feel like this. I genuinely just feel like I'm no one and I have no idea how I won these awards. I mean, it's just in the regionals. But it proves, like the important thing for people to take away, I think, is if you become a little bit intentional about your work, 
you do you do grow in your business and you do grow in your work and being part of any kind of community is it's just so inspirational and it's really uplifting so i think yeah anybody could do that that could have happened to anybody but the interesting thing is that in terms of style is while the awards were happening uh, live the critiques were happening live this year because obviously it had to be moved online people were messaging me going oh my god was that your picture i just saw and i couldn't join it live because i was on another training session and i kept thinking how do they know they're my pictures and people were like no i don't recognize your pictures anywhere so i think yeah that it was quite a strong moment in terms of oh wow people recognize my work that's that's it that is style for me person that's what that's what style is for me if i was to just scrolling scrolling along maybe on social media and i saw a picture within the first few seconds could i say i know who's that is that's just so important so if you if you had to describe your own style how would you describe that um so actually i put a little survey out on my instagram or like my social media and just said to people like how do you see my style and absolutely everybody said natural like the word natural kept coming up which was good for me because um i actually try really hard to walk that fine line between natural and looking aesthetically really pleasing like creating beautiful work but it has to be real so that's my balance pretty but real and i'm naturally i'm scandinavian i think we are quite uncluttered calm kind of a style in most of what we do so that's kind of my style but we obviously know if, as photographers people look at our work and go oh it's really natural but i don't say to the kids knock yourself out kids and i'll just capture this you know in the background it is actually very planned to look natural if it looks effortless there's something really indulging about effortless versus that really contrived overstyled there's absolutely spaces and markets for those but it's just a different feel isn't it? i think people resonate very well with that effortless natural look definitely. definitely definitely so i guess my next question is when did you realize that this kind of look was your style and how did it develop after you first realized that that was you um, so I was prepping these questions yesterday and it was really interesting timing because I've been in the studio and I've been clearing out some old stuff and I actually found some pictures that were probably about eight years old. And um, I have my, um, I've just had my associateship as well with the MPA and I have my A panel off at the minute and I took these eight year old pictures and put them up and actually they sit next to my current work. And I thought, yeah. My style hasn't ever really changed a great deal. My, it's always had that lifestyle feel. But I think what has changed is because you keep training and improving and you get better and better and you're pushing it, your consistency goes up. So historically, I would probably come away from a shoot and go, yes, I've got one good one that kind of looks like me. And now I'd like to think you go out into a shoot and you shoot a panel of pictures and they have that consistency. So it's ne my style has never really changed, but it's gotten a lot stronger and a lot more consistent. I think that's really interesting. I think that that's something is the sort of the consistency of it develops over time um, as the as the work develops, I guess, as well. There's, yeah. there's together. I mean, one thing that people in our community are struggling with at the moment is is how how do they find their style so if if they for example are just like i don't know what my style is what would you say to them and i think we all feel like that and actually i think social media is terrible for that because we see other people's work and other people's work is always better than ours right and um like i scroll through mine and i look at like there's a lot of the American photographers that have that really dark, earthy tone, and I swoon and I think, oh, that's amazing. I want to shoot that. But actually, I think the best thing we can do is own our style because we could take 10 photographers, take us to the same location with the same model, with the same gear, and somehow our pictures would look slightly different. Somehow, what comes out of your camera is, is you. And it's easier to own that and be happy with that rather than always constantly try and shoot something that just isn't coming out of your camera. So I think a good tip for um, working out what your style is, go back and look at your own work. 
over a long period and pick out which ones of these do I like? Which ones do you go back and look at and go, oh, I still really love this picture? And then work out what the commonality is between those pictures. And that's a good starting point for this is clearly my style because this is what I keep coming back to. I think that's a brilliant answer. That was just brilliant. Don't look at other people, like look at your own work, take the inspiration from your own work. I think but I think the other thing is, what phone call do you want to get? Or email do you want to get? The phone rings, you want to pick it up and it's someone going, darling, I have just got to get you to come out and photograph Princess Mia Maya. She's my absolute pride and joy uh, chihuahua. And I want her photographed in her four poster bed wearing all of her bling. Like, is that your dream customer? In that case, that's what you've got to go and shoot. Do you want someone from uh, maybe the military ringing up saying we're making a beautiful coffee book about working dogs and we want you to go and shoot them with their handlers. Do you want the vets to ring up saying we're doing a new um, campaign, marketing campaign, can you come and shoot the pictures for it? Like what is your dream phone call? What is your dream customer? And then you've got to shoot for that because then you will be recognized for that and they are the people you're going to attract. That is just... I couldn't, I just, there is no way I would have been able to explain that like you have explained that. You can have my channel. Oh, how you see the world, because we naturally see the world different. Um, some, like I see a lot of details and some people see light, some people see movement. Like when you enter a scene, what's the first thing that you naturally pick up on? Maybe you pick up on the connection between the dog and the owner, or maybe you pick up on like maybe just like the running ones or the agility shots or like what do you see because it's back to that run with what you naturally see don't try to shoot what you don't naturally see because it's a lot more effort and hard work to basically change what you like because that that, yeah. that just come into it i think as well if you yeah. intrinsically don't resonate with that particular thing or, or subject or style trying to make yourself fit into that it's the worst you can do gonna isn't gonna work it's no just and actually it's a really good point like also be aware of the phone call you don't want to get it, I, this doesn't happen very often anymore but you know historically if you get a phone call saying oh i've got some car batteries and i need them photographed on a white background can you help and you just think oh, no. <laughs> no sorry have you looked at my work <laughs> and it's um like they're the people who need a job done and yes. typically we're not after the people who need a job done we're after the customers who want us to do the work because they want something to look like what we create and they're two very different customers so be aware of who you don't want to phone you and don't show that kind of work why do you think it's important that a photographer develops their own style that they uh, that they produce regularly i just think having a strong brand identity is it's so true that your vibe will attract your tribe so everything we've just talked about who's your dream customer in order to to attract them, you have to show the style that they want to buy. And I know it's such a cliche answer, but there are so many photographers around in all sectors. And if you don't stand out, there's no good reason. If you don't stand out, if you are exactly the same as them, it will come down to price. So unless you stand out, it's like, what's the point in people ringing you? What is your secret sauce? What are you going to do differently? That is so true. That is so because it does it will just come down to price yeah. if, if everybody's shooting the high street studio on a white background all it comes down to is price and yeah. and you know that's something that i've i've said again and again and again over the years if you are not producing work that is different to both the customers now which was something that didn't exist a few years ago no. they they have camera phones which are yeah. very very good yeah. if you're producing work that they could either produce themselves or they could go to somebody else locally to get the same thing it will come down to price a absolutely and, and nobody wants to be chosen for being cheap i mean that is not what i mean life is it it's just not and it's also about being a little bit brave because especially if you're new in photography you might think this is what i really want to shoot but this is what i'm being paid to shoot so it's very tempting to keep shooting what you're being paid to shoot because that's where the money is as opposed to go, no, I'm just gonna draw a line under this and I'm gonna not show any of that work and I'm only gonna show what I want to be what booked for. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Gotta shoot what lights you up and what, like I actually, I made a very conscious decision probably at the beginning of last year. I thought if, if I, if when someone inquired, 
if I knew on the morning of that shoot, I'm going to wake up, look at my calendar and think, oh, it's Saturday. I don't book it in. I only book stuff in so I know I'm going to wake up in the morning and go, oh, this is so exciting. Like, that's part of the point of being self-employed. You get to pick. And you produce better work if you're working with stuff that lights you up. Definitely, definitely. And yeah, it's just such a positive upward spiral, isn't it? Because you're doing the work you like to do, so your work is even better, so you're going to attract better clients. Yeah. To tie, to tie up this interview, I guess the last question is, where do you see your photography going next? Because I think that's quite, that's quite open. No, I definitely want to expand my film. So my kind of thing at the minute is linking the uh, like a creative look between my still images and my film. I absolutely want to introduce more film work to my family, uh, to like my paying families, my paying customers. And I also want to push my online training. So I run a training course where I teach uh, families to do like uh, keepsake family films. And I also teach business owners how to do brand films. So like photographers, we have so much scope for using video because we can use behind the scene we can do promos and actually we can record films for our clients at the same time of doing the shoot so we do, do like moving portraits and yeah so that's my thing is um, doing more with the film stuff that's really interesting so in terms of potentially i don't know if there is any connection but in terms of the the people that are you know subscribe to this youtube channel is there anything that you know they could come to you for help with just oh no, this. absolutely. I've got several photographers actually who's already done the film course. So yeah, no, definitely. That would be well, well, I will I will add links down in the description anyway. Thank you so, so, so much for joining us today. No, thank you for having me. Love it. Thank you. I will move over on to the next interview now. Um, so I guess we will speak soon. And um and yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Great. I'll see you soon. Just introduce yourself. So who are you? What do you shoot and where uh where do you shoot from? So I'm Jo, uh, I am an animal photographer covering mainly uh, dogs and horses um, in North East Lincolnshire, um, but I do cover a little bit further afield as well. Haven't you just picked up something or is that? I, I actually got the East Midlands Pet Photographer Award. When did you start shooting? Can you, re can you remember? Because that, that's hard. <laughs> yeah, so I was, I'm really, I've been very, very lucky. Um, I went to college, did an A-level in photography, so I didn't go to university. Straight from college, I managed to get a job in a, um, a very well-known portrait studio in Market Harbour. Um, it, they're fantastic. They're award-winning. They were brilliant. It was a real privilege to work for them. And I stayed there for, oh, goodness, seven, eight years before I moved up to Grimsby. During that time, not only did I get to experiment with studio portraiture, I also, in 2012, started going through on my own style. That's when I started developing it, um, mainly with canine, uh, equines at that point, um, in studio settings. So I would take a backdrop to the yard with lighting, set it all up and hope they didn't crash into it and trash it all. <laughs> I know how that feels. I have been there. It's quite scary. <laughs> It's a little bit when you've got the back end of a horse going towards your lights and you're thinking, please don't knock it over. If what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a few of your pictures on the screen, yeah. but how would you describe your style? I've got two because obviously I cover location shoots and studio. So my studio images, I try and give it that extra special kind of more of a fine art feel. So I'll maybe use a backdrop with textures, something that's a little bit different and keep it quite quite muted but then my location portraits we keep it very natural and we involve um all aspects so if you're in the woodlands you've got branches and ferns um and then if you're out on the beach then we'll get the horses or the dogs running through the water as well in my opinion your imagery is quite light and Yes. Um, it's, it, the outdoor stuff specifically is quite airy and it just feels very free almost which I think is really nice yeah and I, I do make an effort to edit out any head collars or um, leads and collars just so that you've got that feeling of maybe the horse running loose across the beach when it quite clearly isn't um, because you'd never get it back other options where you've got maybe a dog that has got slight aggression issues so you can't get too close they can't be let off lead so when an owner then sees their dog looking like it's loose, they get a real kind of 
um, strong emotion with that because they can they don't then just see their dog as necessarily an aggressive dog. Yeah, or being confined or constrained. Yeah. Sometimes when, as photographers, we might be posting stuff on social media and everything looks like it's got nothing on, and that's not oh, yeah. actually in real life. That It's not like that. No, not at all. Um, and I know some people, there is, uh, people go, oh, well, just take the collar off, take the collar off. But if you're not comfortable taking that collar off, it's not a problem. In a woodland, I would never ask somebody to take the collar off a dog because they could catch the scent of a rabbit, a squirrel, and just leg it. And if they leg it in a woodland, then you've lost them. Um, and I don't want to be responsible for that. So if somebody doesn't feel comfortable doing it, then it's not a problem. They can leave their dog on lead. They can keep the collar on and we'll edit it out afterwards. Yeah. Make and that those, call. Those skills do take time to to learn it's not going to be quick and easy um the idea when you take it out is that you can't see where you've taken it out um and you do as you progress in your skill level you can then see in other photographs where they've taken it out um <laughs> you've got to make that seamless join but it's it's taken me years to get to the point that i am at now though i and think I'm that's learning and you're still learning this still is learning. something yeah, that's that's important. The, it doesn't stop. I mean, even me, I'm not professing to be the best photographer in the world because I know I'm not. But I think the point is I know I'm not. And therefore, it kind of like I, I can tell people what I know so that other people can learn. But at the same time, I've not finished. I'm still I'm still developing. I'm still learning and, and I'm still hopefully improving as a photographer as well. And there is there is it's a, it's it's not a, there's not a finish line. There isn't. It doesn't exist. No. And as soon as you, you think that you've got to that point where you are amazing and and you're the best there can be, that's when your style stops developing and your images stop getting better. They never move past that point, whereas you can always progress your images. If a photographer was struggling to find their style and they were, you know, saying things like, I don't I, I just feel like I don't know where to start, I don't know what my look is, what would you say to them to try and help them kind of give them a direction to go in to find it? So you've, you've got to like the style that you you want to um, emulate is the wrong word. But the easiest way for me was, was to find images that I liked, images that I was drawn to. So do your research, look at other photographers. It doesn't have to be in the country that you're in. It could be all over the world. And look at that style that, that you're instantly drawn to and you go, OK, wow, that's that's amazing. I want... I'd love to be able to do something like that. Then it gives you a starting point as to where to go. If you like images that are all completely um, in focus and pin sharp and has got have got all the detail, then you're not going to experiment with the softer focusing. Um, if you're not necessarily drawn to location images, but you're drawn to studio images that are bright and airy, uh, maybe on white backgrounds, then you go that way. Um, you got to like what you do because if you don't you don't put that passion into your photography and it's just trying to find that by you do have to experiment and you do I look back through my work over the last few years and I can see the way my style has changed and progressed um, until I'm comfortable with it I look back now at some of them and go oh dear did I do that and <laughs> that's kind of embarrassing but you do and you do, I do. I'm the same. Yeah. And uh, back in 2012, I would never have dreamed of doing outdoor location photography. I was I always studio, studio, studio. Um, but I worked in a studio at the time, so I was drawn more to that side of things. Do you think that someone's style is set? So after they've sort of worked it out, do you think that then that's, that's a done deal? No, not at all. I think there's always ways that you can improve your images. Um, and ways to progress your style um, and make them better. There's always ways to make them better. You, I look at my images now and go, I wish I'd done that or I wish I'd done this. Um, and eventually it will come a second nature and where, what to look for. But you're learning the whole time. So, no, you can always change. Your style is always progressing, definitely. Good answer. Good answer there. <laughs> Where do you see your photography going next? What have you got in the pipeline? Is there anything exciting? Are you going to be training? Is there things that the subscribers can get involved in if they would like to? 
So I've got a mix of things uh, in the uh, in plans at the moment. So I've got um, one workshop booked for Equine Studios that people can come and attend um, and learn a bit more of the studio-based fine art uh, with some absolutely gorgeous Spanish stallions. They are phenomenal. This all um, I've worked with the guy before. I've not worked with these stallions. I've worked with his older stallions. Um, but the way he is with them, you can really see the bond that people have with their horses, the real, real horsemen. Um, so I've got that one. I also have a horse beach shoot where I've been buying up wedding dresses. <laughs> um, I think I have three now. Um, and we're going, there's a girl who does Liberty um, with her horses. So they're completely loose on the beach. There's nothing. So from an editing perspective, there's no head collars, no lead ropes, nothing. Um, and she plays with them on the beach. And so they follow her, they play with her and they move with her. So I have a beach session scheduled with her when we can do so. Um, as far as progressing my own work, I'm always learning. I'm always looking for opportunities to learn. Uh, the mid last year, I was lucky enough to get my associateship with the MPA. Um, so I am looking at the fellowship, um, but that is going to be a few a few years I would think in the planning it's not something I'm jumping straight into but to plan a, a fellowship panel would be amazing yeah that, that sounds really exciting you've got some really good stuff coming up I have I'm really excited um and then obviously the trip to the Lake District as well so yes there's a lot of um I've got a lot of opportunities not only for myself but for others coming up in the next few months as well so it's very exciting yeah, very. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time today. I really, really appreciate it. Honestly, we will move on to our next interview now. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Right. First of all, I looked at your about page on your website. <laughs> and I found it hilarious. And the, the my favourite line, let me just get that up. Hang on a sec. My favourite line is, you're on the right side of 95, but the wrong side of middle age. <laughs> Yeah, well, that that is really true. And actually, do you know what? It's only when you get to there, you realise that that's actually a superpower. It just made the whole of the about page just made me chuckle from start to finish. So I kind of had like a hint about what this call might, which direction we might go. <laughs> the first question is, who are you? What do you shoot? And where do you shoot that from? So over to you. I am Annie Burbage. I trade as Annie B portraits. Um, I shoot predominantly portraits and weddings. My portrait work is predominantly pets, but not, not all pets. Um, and I work for an on-farm studio, really lucky we farm at home. So I've got an on-farm studio right in the middle of the country um, in Northamptonshire, but I travel nationwide for, uh, for weddings and portraits. So if you were to describe your style of photography in a few words or a sentence or two, how would you describe that? Um, prob probably along the lines of the old masters, if I'm truthful. Um, I, I find other photographers call it fine art, and I'm not ever so comfortable with that. For me, fine art is a little bit more stylized than what I do. At the end of the day, I'm shooting a dog or a horse. And a dog or a horse will be what they are. But my but my style is very much in that of the old masters. It's, it's quite dark, earthy tones, um, very classical portrait style. When you think back, did you always photograph in that style? Was that always what you did? Or did you sort of come across that? And if you did come across that, how did that start and then develop from there? Uh, truthfully, I would love to give you a very profound and artistic answer to that, and that is not going to happen. Um, I developed that as a style from a, almost from a commercial point of view. Uh, photography, whilst I've been a portrait photographer for probably 35 years, it was not my main income stream for a very long time. I'm an 
bank manager. For a long time, I had um, a management accountancy company. And whilst my photography was very important and, and a business in every sense of the word, it wasn't my main income stream. And then six years ago, I had quite a bad car accident and I actually fractured quite a lot of vertebrae in my neck. And suddenly I couldn't do the accountancy work so much. And I had I concentrated, I wanted to concentrate on the photography, which I could still do. Well, there are three things I know as a bank manager. One, photographers or artists in general do not run good businesses. And that is a given. And that's not a recent phenomenon. If you look back in history, history is full of starving artists. So I know that photographers don't make good business people, and I knew that, that was going to happen to me. I know that you struggle to sell things that people can do themselves or make themselves. And the other thing I really know from having worked with lots and lots of industries, you will only ever be successful selling something you love. So I kind of had to take a step back and almost reverse engineer my photography business and say, OK, what do you love? And at the time, I loved everything. I love photographing people. I love photographing babies. I love photographing dogs. So I reverse engineered it and said, OK, what do you hate? And that was so easy. I hate photographs on a phone, on a computer, in the cloud. I hate digital and I suddenly realised that what I actually love are fine art prints. And I wanted a business where my customers went away with something beautiful on fine art paper to hang on the wall. So immediately that took me away from cake smashes and that kind of photography. Um, and I just looked around my house. And you can probably just see behind me, there's a couple of Nick Corston fine art prints. Everything on the walls of my house are, is animals. It's quite dark. Um, you know, I love Angela Davidson's art. There's a, a big limited edition print of hers in the front room. And I suddenly knew what I loved. I loved art and I loved it to be of animals. And that was where my style developed from. Um, I just started to try to photograph what I love. Um, and that was what I loved. And that's what sells because I love it. So it came from a commercial perspective. Did I always know that? Yes. When I look back and I look at the photographs I took when I was much younger, they are in that style. Did I know that was my style? No. I, do, I think you learn that as you get older you know from knowing kind of what else I do that for me the the my business hat is on as well the, there's but that's not normal for the for the industry. industry I'm shocked by this industry um having come into it really with both feet and six years ago I'm shocked at how people they don't understand where their competition is they think their competition is other photographers and it isn't other photographers at all. Um, I, see in, I see in chat rooms people say, I've had another newborn photographer open up 20 miles away. And I feel like saying, how many, how many newborns are born in your county a year? And they would probably go, 30,000. And how many shoots do you want to wait to? Well, that's 104. Another photographer opening up is not your problem. Your problem is you're competing with your client's limited budget and you've got to raise yourself up in what they want. You know, you're competing against the family holiday, the children needing new shoes, you're competing against um, the new iPhone. And not just from a photography point of view, um, just because that's what they want to spend their money on. It's what they value. It is absolutely what they value. And I think in this industry, more than any other that I've ever worked in, the photographers haven't got a, they haven't got a grasp on that. They're, they're forever watching what everybody else is doing 
and wasting all their energy that they should be actually putting into themselves and what they do. This is why photographers need to stop following photographers. That is not where photographers should be drawing their inspiration from. Because if you want to be a standout photographer, you need to be doing something that stands out. Different. Different from everybody. Completely different to everybody. But if somebody was struggling, really struggling to find their style and they didn't really know how to find their own look and feel and develop that and make sure that they were different from, you know, the, especially the local competition in terms of their area. How would you advise them to try and pin down their, their individual style and then develop that? What do you think you would say to them? I think the first thing that I would say to them is stop looking at what other photographers are producing. That would be the first thing I would say. If you want to look at other photographers, go and look at other photographers that are working in a genre that you don't shoot. So if you are a newborn photographer, go and go and look at what dog photographers are producing or landscape photographers and just have a look and see what catches your eye and what you love. Because you need to know what you love. Now, if I go to an art gallery, which is something else I would say to photographers go and do, the images that I stand in front of and think, oh, okay, are dark. There's earthy colours, they're muted colours. Um, they're old masters. They very often got dogs in. They very often got horses in. I love them. That has become my style. Um, so look at look at look at other things other than photographs. Go to an art gallery. Go and walk around an art gallery. Pick up a magazine. Flick through it. Flick through a newspaper. Just look at images and try and identify what you love. Uh, color. Are you drawn to warm colors or you know, darker colors? focal points, composition, what is it that is stopping you in your track and making you think, oh, wow, I love that. I can remember years and years ago, I wouldn't have been very old, I was working in London and I got off um, a commuter train early in the morning, packed on Euston Station and I was sort of being jostled along and I suddenly stopped dead and if anybody commutes into London they will know one thing you don't do in a packed commuter station is stop dead like everybody piled into me and swore at me but on the newsstands there's National Geographic magazine and on the front cover was a photograph by uh, Steve McCurry which is now quite famous it's called Afghan Girl and I stopped dead I could not believe this photograph it was beautiful it just hypnotized me and now when I look back although that is quite different to what I do it was um you know it was a location portrait natural light very different to what I do it was very much my style it was the same color palette it was the same focal length it was everything that I've become and decades ago, that image stopped me in my path. Um, so if you don't know what your style is, I think if you're under 30, go and have a look at other people's work. If you're over 30, I think you will probably know. You just need to think about it because there's a lot of medical evidence that says by the time of 30, our personality is fixed. Um, and I think as you get older, life experiences and wisdom come. And I think we know our style. We just don't know how to identify that we know our style. So just, just look what you've got hanging on the walls in your house. That will tell you what your style is. Because you will have only put up on your walls what you love. 
I promise to everybody watching, I did not pick any of these people because we have the same views. I just want to make that really clear. I, I didn't know the answers to any of these questions before right now. It just so happens that we're on the same page for all of them. It's interesting, though, that we have the same views, yet very different styles. Yes. And I think that is actually very telling. You obviously believe in what you do for all your reasons, which are completely different to mine. And your style is completely different to mine, but actually fundamentally we're coming from the same place. And that is why we shouldn't be looking at other photographers' work. Your work is not wrong because it's different to mine and my work is not wrong because it's different to yours definitely um, and actually we're the same people underneath we're doing the same thing just in a different way just to move to the move to the last question which is where where do you see your photography going next because I know you do obviously your portraits and your weddings do you see anything of that changing is there anything exciting coming up uh, yeah, there is something exciting coming up, which I've been completely scuppered with because coronavirus came and um, took all my plans. I'm actually opening an equine studio. So, on the farm? On the farm. This is where I'm quite lucky with where I live. Um, May May to sort of September, October time, we turn all our cows out. So we, we have a lot of empty farm buildings. So I'm commandeering one to turn it into an equine studio so that I can light horses and put them on a backdrop, very much like I do dogs in the studio. So I am quite excited about that. That's very exciting. Very exciting. Thank you so, so much for uh, giving us your time because it's not just me. So thank you so much for giving us your time today. And um, I will link your website in the description of the video as well and um, I guess we will catch up soon Annie thank you so much thank you it's been an honor and a pleasure wow so I think that that was a really good good day of interviews this has been a long long day and I would just like to say thank you so much for sticking to this point I will just also say that I will have a blog post on this topic below please do also go into the description box and look at the photographers that we've included today give them some love on their social media channels that would be much appreciated they deserve it because they have given up their free time on a weekend to help you guys out so personally you know if it was me I would be going ahead going on all of them giving them a like giving them a follow giving them some love in that department i absolutely love you thank you so much for joining me i will see you again soon oh it's a long 